Okay, so it's always a good day when you can do a math word problem. And I have a nice, lovely little math word problem right here. Let me actually go ahead and read this thing to you. It says, a pump rated at 25 gallons per minute is used to empty a 15,000 gallon pool. How many hours will the job take? So this is the problem. If you understand the problem and you can actually solve this thing, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But let me just uh, clarify something here, just in case you're confused. A pump rated, okay, so what does this word mean, uh, rated at 25 gallons per, uh, per minute? This is the capacity of the pump. So if you're not quite sure what this meant, you're like rated, what does that mean? Well, this is what the pump can do, all right? This pump is capable of pumping out 25 gallons per minute. All right, so there is the problem. Again, if you think you could do this, put your answer in through the comment section. And then we're going to get into how to solve this problem. But I don't want to give you too many clues right now because I want to give you an opportunity to get this thing right and to make some common mistakes as well because a lot of students are going to uh, answer this question. And they're going to answer it confidently, but they're going to be incorrect. So let's go ahead and see how well you do here. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So uh, this particular word problem, um, let's just read it one more time. A pump rated at, i.e., uh, this pump's uh, ability is 20, can pump 25 gallons per minute, is used to empty out a 15,000-gallon pool. Okay, so I kind of understand that situation. How many hours will the job take, i.e., how long does this pump need to run, uh, this 25-gallon per minute pump need to run to empty out this 15,000-gallon pool? Now, after you uh, read a math word problem or an algebra word problem, anything like that, you want to try to model the situation. You know, so oftentimes it's uh, helpful to draw a little sketch, you know, kind of like translate the words, the sentences of the word problem into something a little bit more visual. That's very useful. So you could even do something as simple as this. So draw yourself a little pool. There's 15,000 gallons. We want to empty this pool out with this pump. Uh, that this pump can pump out 25 gallons per minute. So here is some observations here, right? So this pump's rating, its capacity is given to me in gallons, right? I know I can uh, take out 25 gallons per minute. So that's a really important concept. I'm dealing with gallons here and dealing with gallons here. Anytime you're working with a math word problem and there's things like there's uh, units involved, right? Units of measure involved, like feet, inches, miles, uh, gallons, you know, hours. You need to be on high alert for units of measure. That's going to have a big, big impact. I'll talk more about this a little bit more in the solution to this video. But this is a little bit of a reminder here because we are dealing with gallons per minute. Right. So anyways, you, maybe some of you kind of know where I'm going here with this. But let's um, kind of take a look at our pump information. So we're being told that this pump can pump out 25 gallons per minute. That's how you would say that, right? 25 gallons per minute. And this word per, anytime you see this word per, where else would you see the word per, uh, for example? How about this? 70 miles per, okay? Uh, 70 miles per hour, whoops, uh, per hour. We don't write it 70 miles per hour. We typically write it this way, uh, MPH, 70 miles per hour. So we're dealing with something called a rate, okay? So I described, if I asked you, hey, what's the rate of that truck going down the road? And you said you would interpret that word, R-A-T, rate as what? As speed or velocity, and you would be correct. So the rate of the truck, for example, could be 70 miles per hour. But we need to kind of uh, really understand when we're given a rate, how do we kind of really break that down? Well, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, example right here. So 25 gallons per minute. So the uh, word per is like a fraction bar, okay? So 25 gallons per one minute, 70 miles per one hour. You can write it that um, this way, for example, but really what you're writing is 70 miles per, there's that line, 
one hour. You want to express these rates as a fraction. And the technical definition of a rate in mathematics is it's basically a fraction where the numerator and denominator have different units of measure. Okay, so here, what's the unit of measure for our numerator? It's gallons, which is what? Volume. Okay, so that's volume. We're comparing volume with uh, what's this unit of measure down here? Minutes with time. Okay, so we're comparing comp two completely different units of measure. That's called uh, a rate in mathematics. So here we're comparing distance and time, uh, of course, that's miles per hour. All right, so there's another uh, related concept called ratio, and anytime you're dealing with rates and ratios, you want to be thinking about proportions, okay? So the deal here is this. You know, when you read this problem, you know that you're given some sort of rate, so go ahead and express it this way. That's going to be kind of a, uh, a hint on how to solve this problem, okay? And math problems, they, there's you know basically patterns associated with it, but if you have a math problem and there is a rate or ratio in it, you want to be thinking proportion. So let's go ahead and set up a proportion to solve this problem. Now, some of you may not have set up a proportion exactly in this way. You probably you know, did some number crunching and were able to get the right answer. That's perfectly fine. Again, as long as you can you know, outline and express your conclusions in, you know, in a logical manner. But this is really what you want to do. You want to set up a proportion. So a proportion is two equal rates or ratios or fractions. That is a proportion. So if I have one rate and it's equal to another rate, that is a what we call a proportion. But again, for those of you that are not quite sure what a proportion is, it's one fraction equaling to another fraction. So for example, if I have the fraction one half, and I said, hey, give me another fraction that's equal to one half. Well, there's a ton of them. How about five over 10? Okay, so five over 10 is equal to the fraction one half. When you have, this is by definition a proportion, two equal fractions. Remember, a rate is in itself a fraction. So two equal rates or two equal ratios, a ratio is a fraction as well, is a proportion. And when you have a proportion, you have something called the cross product. So this is one times 10 is 10. That's going to be equal to this uh, product crosswise, two times five is 10. So 10 is equal to 10. The cross product is true. So just in case uh, those of you out there are a little bit rusty on proportions, when you have a proportion, you're going to use the cross product to solve proportion uh, problems. And I'll get into, into this a little bit more here in a second. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and uh, use this rate that we have, 25 gallons per minute. So we know this pump can pump out 25 gallons per minute. Notice where the units of measure at. I have gallons in the numerator and minutes in the denominator. So what you want to do is set this equal to uh, 15,000 gallons uh, per X minutes. Okay, gallons again are in the numerator and minutes we don't know. But basically it's this. If this pump can pump out uh, 25,000 gallons uh, per one minute, it's the same. Uh, it, it, this is proportional to the pump pumping out 15,000 gallons to this many minutes. Okay, so this fraction or this proportion is equal to this proportion. We're just uh, pumping out more gallons here. Uh, we do we can do 25 gallons per one minute, and we can do this proportion is the same as doing 15,000 gallons to this many minutes. Okay, so I really want you to understand what a proportion is and why we can use them. All right, so if you understand what's going on, again, be very uh, careful when you're setting up proportions. Uh, if this is gallons and this is minutes, this up here has to be gallons and this has to be minutes. All right, so let's distill this down into just a basic proportion problem. So this would be 25 over 1 is equal to 15,000 over X. And, of course, we want to solve for X. Before we continue on, it would really mean a lot to me if you hit that subscribe button. Now, the reason I want more subscribers is basically I look at everybody that subscribes to my channel as a new student. And as a math teacher, that makes me very happy. So uh, the best way to support this channel and what I do is to simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. 
Now remember, uh, irrespective of whether you're a math student or not, if you want to relearn math, for example, and you've been out of school for many, many years, I have two great courses, my Math Foundation and my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You can find links to all of this in the description of this video. But if you happen to be a student, make sure to check out my full uh, course library. Again, you can find the links to all of this in the description below. And how are we going to solve Rex? Again, we're going to use that cross product. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let me use my little highlighter here. All right, so 25 times X is what? 25x, and that's going to be equal to 1 times 15,000, which of course is 15,000. So how do I solve for x? I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 25. I get x is equal to 600. But what is x? Well, let's go back up here to so make sure we understand. x is minutes, all right? x is that unknown that we solved for, but its unit of measure is minutes. So we just solved the answer. Uh, it's 600 minutes. Now, if some of you were just in a rush, and a lot of students will do this, they'll be all happy. They'll like, look at me. I can do proportions. And they'll write 600 uh, down as their answer. Okay. Sometimes they'll just write 600. Sometimes they'll write 600 minutes. But what was the question? Well, let's look at the question one more time. The question says, how many hours? Hours, not minutes. So <laughs> you got to convert minutes two hours. All right, this is where it gets uh, students um, can get themselves in trouble. And a, a lot of you are probably saying, please don't tell me to read the problem again and again and again. You say that so many times. Well, listen, I'm, I'm telling you that I'm being redundant because uh, this is where a lot of students go wrong. They know how to do the math, but then they, they answer the wrong question. Okay. Or they're like, this goes too quick. They forget, Hey, am I answering the right question? So anytime you're doing any math word problem, when you're done, go back and read, look at that question carefully and be like, all right, am I, an am I given the answer that the question is uh, asking? So hours, how many hours, not how much time. If the question was how much time will the job take, you could sit, say 600 minutes, but we want to know how many hours. So let's convert minutes to hours. So 600 minutes, how many hours? Well, we just take, uh, there's 60 minutes in one hour. So somebody could just say, oh, that's 600 uh, divided by 60, right? And that's exactly correct. That would be 10 hours. But let's just take a little bit closer look at cur uh, converting units of measure. Um, because this is important, although this example is pretty easy. What's technically going on here is we have 600 minutes. We want to go from minutes to hours. So anytime you're converting any unit of measure, you want to know what we would call a conversion factor. Okay. So the conversion factor that we want to use here is one hour uh, per 60 minutes. Okay. Or one hour to 60 minutes. In other words, there is one hour for every 60 minutes. So notice here I have hours and minutes, but there's one hour per 60 minutes, but also there's 60 minutes per, let me actually do this right here because this is a very important detail. Okay. So we need to have so what we call a conversion factor. We can express this as one hour to 60 minutes or 60 minutes uh, to one hour. Okay. So 60 minutes per one hour or, six, or one hour per 60 minutes. So these are uh, both correct, right? And we call these conversion factors. But which one am I going to use? I'm going to have to take my 600 minutes and multiply it by a conversion factor. Which one should I uh, select? This one or this one? Well, here is the answer. Okay, so notice here I have 600 minutes. Really, you want to think of this as a fraction, 600 uh, minutes over one. So the deal is this. Anytime you're converting from one unit to another, okay, here I want to get rid of minutes and be left with hours. So when I multiply these two fractions, I'm going to have a minute in the numerator and a minute in the denominator. These minutes can cross cancel, okay? So this is the deal. You want to look at what conversion factor will cross cancel the unit of measure you're trying to get rid of. So instead of using uh, this one here, if I had minutes in the numerator and hours over here, I would have minutes times minutes. I would end up with minutes squared. So be very careful when you're working with conversion uh, factors. So we're going to cross cancel, cancel minutes here, and we're going to be left with hours. That's why you have 600 over 1 times 1 over 60, which is the same thing as 600 
divided by 60 hours, which of course is 10 hours. Now, a lot of you, because this is so easy, you're like, oh, there's 60 minutes in one hour. You know, you could just do this mentally and, and do this math. But if I gave you more challenging units of measure to convert, uh, believe me, you would have to go ahead and go through this process. So, you know, when you watch my videos, what I try to do is really fully explain all the different subskills that you need to be successful in these type of problems. But uh, listen, if you need uh, more help with word problems, you know, you need to do what? You need to practice. It's impossible to get better at algebra problems or math word problems by just doing one or two of them. But like, okay, I get it. I can just handle any word problem that comes my way. No, you want to do a wide vari a variety of problems because you're going to find patterns. If you're at that uh, level of math of pre-algebra, algebra one, this is algebra two. I'm telling you right now, there is patterns in these type of problems. There's very classic type of traditional uh, problems that you're going to see. You're going to see rate and time problems, proportion problems, uh, time problems. And if you know how to do one, then that's going to give you uh, a lot of a hint. Uh, hints on how to solve other related type of problems. So you got to practice, practice, practice. And if you need more practice, I have additional word problems on, math word problems on my YouTube channel. But in all of my math courses, um, I have a lot of word problems. And word problems are also related to the particular topic you're learning. If you're learning about systems, there's systems word problems. If you're learning about quadratic equations, there's quadratic equation word problems. That's why you can't say, hey, look, here has a bunch of word problems. It all depends on what level of math you're at and what topic you are studying. But if this particular video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.